You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, hey guys, welcome to our continuing coverage here of CES Live. I'm John P. And I'm Miriam Joir. And uh, we've got all kinds of great stuff going up. I guess you guys have been watching for hours. This is our first time uh, on I the broadcast know. stage. It's it's trouble. You we've and been I working. on the stage you together? And I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. But one thing I do know that's going to happen is we've got Dirk here with hey. us. And uh, he's from Unikey. Dirk's we're, back again. We're, I'm, we love having you on the show. You always have awesome stuff. And as I understand it, we've got some new things to talk about. But before we do, for those who are unfamiliar. A brand let's, new car. Let's, <laughs> Everybody let's, gets it a does. car. It, it sounds like we're about to do like a Wheel of Fortune thing, right? Everybody um, gets a car. Let's let's step back and talk about what you guys do at the most basic level to start with. Absolutely, so who is Unikey? We don't make products. We make things that go inside a product. So we're a technology licensor. And the most notable one is the first smart lock to market, which is a quick set Kibo. In Canada, it's called the Wiser Kibo with the brand up there. You got a different name in Canada. And it's a different Quickset ah. brand. It's the number one lock oh, brand okay. in Canada. Wow. Okay, gotcha. And Quickset's a lock that sells mainly in the United States, but around the world. They've actually opened distribution in Australia, New Zealand comes on, and the Quickset Kivo will be available in more places. The difficulty with locks is, locks aren't the same everywhere around the world. The really? standards are different yeah. from country to country, and even worse, from region to region around countries sometimes. I know, I truly know nothing about locks, I guess. So does that mean you pretty much have to adapt to different manufacturers, not just, I mean, in this case, you got the same company, but different names, right? A absolutely, and in the United States, a single cylinder deadbolt is pretty familiar to everybody. That's over 95% yeah. of the doors, I believe, are single cylinder deadbolts. Some people have auxiliary handles. But when you talk about other types of locks, and we license to multiple manufacturers, and you'll see more of those, coming on from us, but other types of locks from a mortise lock, and some people may recognize this at the show if they're oh. looking, as a hospitality yeah, lock. Yeah, you scan it with your badge That's and right. it lets you right in. But we're going to make that even easier. No way, you. okay, I, all right. Okay, I, go had ahead. To, I had to stand in line smart for 40 watch, minutes right? to get into my hotel. I don't know that how long sucks. your check-in was. Yeah, uh, well, I, well, I got here on like Friday night, so it wasn't as bad, but yeah. it, it wasn't good. Yeah, I don't have any minions to get in line. <laughs> so I is. thought you made the world's smallest doors. That's right. <laughs> Very small, with very small people. So we do have a few updates, and okay. I can tell you a little bit about that, but at its core, Unikey is a technology company, and we license to industry leaders. We don't try to reinvent the lock, the bike lock, the hotel lock, the door lock. There are people in space that have done that for 100 years, they do it well, and a lock, believe it or not, is much more complicated than at least I would have expected. Uh, I, I believe it. People. Yep. So that's the, that's the core of Unikey, and we continue to look for partners and bring additional partners to market, but the partners that allow us to showcase their products are the ones that we're going to show today. Okay, so you are showing us a couple locks. We've talked about some differences in the in the standards and types of locks, but the most important thing is you've got a smartphone beside each one of these doors. Why? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, the smartphone <laughs> is now your key, but the most important thing with Unikey technology is your smartphone is the key that, in those cases, oh, would remain God. in your pocket. So simply by touching the door lock is going to initiate the communication between the smartphone, and I'm a thinks of behind the door, the smartphone. Oh, that makes me so happy. And the lock. I love the LEDs. That means you don't have to pull out the phone to unlock the door. No. What is it? Bluetooth proximity sensor? What it's is it? Bluetooth. So there's no proximity. The initiation okay. of the communication between the device and the lock is that simple passive touch to the lock. So your pocket, your phone stays in your pocket, yep. your purse, your bag, my kid's backpack. You, if, set, you set it up one time and the phone becomes the token, right? right. The authentication token. Just and let's time. say let's say if my wife and I go to the grocery store together and we're both coming back and we both have bags, it doesn't matter which of us gets to the door first, any, either of us can touch it? You're both going to have an e-key on your phone, but even if she had but, her phone and you didn't have yours. But I beat her to the door, touching but we're close enough yeah. that, when I, that it sees that she's with me, so it lets me open the door. Bingo, my children beat me to the door every time. Oh, that's awesome, now, that's awesome. Now my children don't have smartphones. Okay. And we found you know, paramount to what we thought success would be in this product, 
was we had to have an offline solution as well. Right. And this is a simple fob, and these are safety pinned in my kids' backpacks. My older mother carries one of these because she no longer wants to go through the experiment of a smartphone. Yep. She's back to a feature flip phone. So is it just an RFID thing? Or? It's not RFID, oh, it's Bluetooth, just the right? same experience. So that fob's going to stay in your pocket or your purse. How long is the battery life on this? It's a, oh. probably like a watch battery, right? It's, a, it's about yep. a year on the fob, and same thing for the lock. The lock's going to run on four standard AA batteries. Wow. Wow. And those batteries are going to last in excess of a year based on normal use. We call normal use 10 times in and out per day. So wow. 10 full in actuations and in reality, people don't do 10 full times So are, are you supporting Bluetooth connections directly to watches yet? Not yet through watches. Now we're still work with a, 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 a challenge response architecture, PKI if anybody's understood with that. So every transaction between the phone and the lock is unique. Right. So cloning, repeating things that have been you know, known as security issues in this aren't. But the experience is just like your car. Or, or I don't know if you have that kind of car. Where you touch car, it. Yeah, yeah. Simply touch I it. walk, I touch yeah. the lock and it opens. So it's a known understood behavior. In fact, now I'm pissed when I can't touch something yeah. and have it open. When because I get my a car rental car me. that doesn't have that, yeah, you're I, get, like, I get angry. I yeah. want to break the car. Yeah, yeah you get yeah, right? mad. And isn't yeah. it maddening? You sat for a few years. I mean, the cars were ahead of this technology <laughs> yeah. and what they offer. It's not the same type of technology. I'll show you one piece. And this is unique, which Unikey brings. So in touching the door lock on the outside, it opens. Now if I'm on the inside of the house, the lock needs to understand that I'm on the inside. Okay, how did it do that? And deny me access. How did that happen? So that's part of Unikey's IP that we bring, but yeah. the, the core of it is there's attenuation in the front, there's attenuation in the back, and without hardware on both sides of the door, that's an impossibility. Right. Right. So, so you're basically measuring it and you're saying, oh, the signal is stronger on this side, so it. I know that it's on the inside now. And it adapts dynamically. I live in Pennsylvania, my phone's in a very different place in the winter than it is in the summer. So it continues to learn those nuances of wherever I'm carrying my phone or my battle up and down with my holiday pounds, whatever <laughs> it happens to be. So I have a comment and a question. The comment is, obviously, since the keys are stored on the phone, you can unauthorize a key remotely from the cloud. One of the most important things. So you can fire things. your children and they can't get into your house. We so you really want to be mean. You know, we don't have. I didn't even get that this was cloud connected. This was not, this didn't the even. The phone is. I for, yeah, uh, it is, but I guess I, I did not put that together that there was so this. So the key is authorized through an app or through the website that they have externally. Yes, yes. You know, I don't know why I, I, I forgot that. One of the most important things let me not get my contacts for everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. My personal contacts. One of the most important things is not only sending e-keys to folks, but it's certainly deleting e-keys from folks at right. any point. Uh -huh. And this gives you uh -huh. the ability not only to do that, but as you'd expect, I can set parameters. Keys are good for certain right. times so of the day. So you can set keys just for your guests if you're like airbnb -ing. And boom. Airbnb, the oh yeah, that would be awesome. Oh yeah, that would be a awesome. A lot of Airbnb people are starting to utilize the technology, and it gives you audibility. So I've got a log. I understand when people can come and go for the important events. I can set notifications to pop up on my phone. So, so. the question I had was, have you talked to the automotive manufacturers that can re we can replace these ugly things? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, with your phone. And that's Unikey's mission: is to replace one key, one code, one padlock, whatever it is in your life one at a time and get your key ring onto your phone. Okay, now I've got to change gears for a minute and we're running, we don't have all day, I'd love to keep going on this, but I heard there was something going on with you guys and Nest. There was, there was an announcement of Nest integration. Uh -huh. and it's one of the first integration announcements that, that Unikey has made and it'll work across the Unikey platform. But in the quick set Kivo, on opening, if you set up and pair it with your Nest, it's going to verify and ask you on leaving or on entry if you want to set your temperature to away or home. One of the things that we bring that the Nest currently doesn't offer is individuality. So yep. I have different e-key owners and I can set my own preferences. Oh. I like it cooler than my wife. My wife likes it cooler than I do. We don't have to walk to the thermostat to battle each other anymore. We can simply do it on walking. Because it tells, it tells Nest who's at home. Right. right. 
And then do you have to tell it like, okay, if my wife and I are home, my wife always wins. So you gotta, you know, like, <laughs> you gotta give it to her. We, we don't have that prioritization. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's really gonna be who comes in next, but it's ultimately anybody can run right to the thermostat. Okay. <laughs> and you know, the added bonus is it's extra data points for your nest. Yeah. So I don't have to walk past the IR sensor in the kitchen. When I come into my home, I go into my office. And by the time I come out of my office, my nest thinks I'm long gone. Yeah. And this is just another data point for it to know that I've been in the home, but I just haven't walked past the thermostat. Right, and, and ultimately as we start to integrate our house automation even further, you know, Nest has uh, agreements with the car makers now, when the cars get close to your house, they turn on your Nest. So now there's like three levels of kind of authentifying that you are in your house, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Important. One is your car, you got there, one is the phone, when you touch your door lock, and the next one is going to be your Nest when it detects you walking by. Yeah. Now. Before we get going though, you also have this hospitality type lock here. What have you got going on with that? So think of if you're in a hotel, it's a pretty easy transaction. Once you get through check-in, yeah. right? That transaction of simply bringing my room key and yeah. touching it to the front is pretty easy. The only way that we feel that technology is going to succeed in that world is to simplify the process and not add additional steps. Adding additional steps of having to pull the phone from my pocket when I'm already overloaded with luggage and a coffee, whatever else it is, yeah. and go through a myriad of steps to simply open the room door is a parlor trick. Figuring out. Charming and cute the first time. The worst thing for me is when they give me that key, I've got like 14 pockets. I don't know which pocket I put yep, it in. That's where I lose mine the yeah. most time. <laughs> but your smartphone, so the ability to send an e-key to your smartphone through your app, Dirk's big hotel app, whichever app happens yeah. to be yours, and simply walking to the door. Oh my God. So I want that. Wouldn't it be nice if we had that at this I, show? You need to sell that to Flamingo. We're staying with them too, and I mean, <laughs> I, 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 that would be so awesome. Yeah. So you have your authenticated key for your phone in your server. You could theoretically pair up with any service provider to say, hey, I can, when they make a transaction, I can give you John P's key, so when he arrives at the hotel, you just text him what his room number is, and he just goes to and it. And for the programmers, it won't be Unikey. It'll future, actually. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, now everybody's getting yeah, jobs done. Yeah. This. I mean, it would run through the hotels. We'd have an SDK, integrates into the hotel's app. They work through APIs. It's all on the back end, whether they give you your key 24 hours in advance, when you choose your room, when you come on site, when you come within proximity. That's really up to the individual hotelers. But the technology to be able to send secure keys and simply walk to the door and have it unlocked because your smartphone's, again, in your pocket yeah. with no interaction, and we've simplified what's a pretty easy process. That is so awesome. I have a couple more questions. Do we have okay, time? Okay, quickly, we're almost right. out of time. Only iOS or Android too? Android's a, gr a great point to bring up. We've let an Android client out on the market. Android 5.0 Lollipop finally enables the full use Ali, of Bluetooth yeah. Smart. And Bluetooth okay. Smart has two roles, a peripheral role and a central role, and 5.0 is the first one that initiates what's called peripheral role for us. So we're extremely excited. We've had a lot of Android folks using yeah. FOBs um, and starting with the Nexus 6 and 9, and as you see devices, go to the Google Play Store, the app's up there. So today. when they hit five, they're all good. And what then, would you rather? And then the next question was, are you going to integrate with the uh, fingerprint reader for high security applications? There could be. Now we could spend you know an extra week talking about yeah. the origins of this company, so Unikey 2010 company, but the core folks here were actually the ones that bought the first mass market fingerprint market, or fingerprint solutions to market. There are some great ones out there. They're really expensive, not really consumer products, uh, but that's the origin of the Unikey product. The frustration of fingerprint scanning reliant too much on human right. interaction and human but error. But what I'm saying is that your iPhone does a very good job at, so you know, using the, uh, the touch ID. Oh, it's a second touch line ID. of it's authentication. Second, that's, that's right, and that's exactly what I said, more secure application ah, of the existing app you have using question. Touch ID. That so we're happen. not putting a fingerprint reader on the lock. Are you yes. kidding me? That's 2000, that's 1997. <laughs> You'll see that. Right now there's an option. There's a second <laughs> line of authentication option in there for folks that want. On that touch, it will pop up a code. To you can punch send me a check when people. you implement it. Right, exactly. Done. Dirk, thank you so much for Absolutely. bringing the new toys out and sharing it with us. You guys, stay tuned. We've got a lot more coverage coming at you here from CES 2015. We're going to wrap it for this one. Don't go anywhere. Peace. <laughs>